to talk to you today about everyone's two favorite topics, sexual assault and math. Wait, don't click out of this video just yet. I know both of those things can be kind of difficult to talk about, but we're going to try and make a scary and complicated topic a little less scary and a little easier for you to understand. We're both students at Tulane who care about these issues, and we want to make sure that you have the tools you need to make sense of them. On August 31st, 2015, Tulane University publicly presented the results of a pilot climate survey that was sent out to students last fall. What exactly is a climate survey? Good question, because you'll probably be hearing the words climate survey more and more often pretty soon. Climate surveys are a new tool that schools are using around the country to assess rates of sexual victimization on their campuses. They came as a suggestion from the White House Task Force to protect students from sexual assault. Right now, there's no one standard climate survey, but some schools and organizations have started to create and perfect surveys that will hopefully soon be ready for widespread use. Cool, so what kinds of things do these surveys tell us? Big data sets like this can seem pretty overwhelming, but there are three really important questions that you can start with when you're trying to understand the numbers. First, what's the timeline? This may seem obvious, but it's important to know what time frame you're looking at in order to really understand the numbers. If you were at Tulane's presentation on the 31st, you might have missed the fact that the statistics that they showed occurred over the course of one year only. Oh yeah, that makes sense, because saying 4% of Tulane students are raped is different from saying 4% of Tulane students are raped in one year. Exactly. The next thing we want to ask is, what types of questions were used in the survey? A lot of research suggests that the best questions to ask in these types of surveys are called behavior-based questions. The difference is that instead of saying, have you experienced a sexual assault in the last 12 months, a behavior-based question would instead ask, in the last 12 months, has another individual used force to make you have sex when you didn't want to? If I remember correctly, Tulane's survey did not use behavior-based questions. That's right. One thing that the Tulane presentation made very clear is the risk of underreporting. They were very upfront about the fact that the real numbers might be higher, and they say that they'll be using behavior-based questions in future surveys. Finally, we want to ask what demographics were included in the survey. One demographic distinction that we know is important in sexual assault statistics is the difference between the experiences of undergraduate students and graduate students. We know that undergrads experience sexual assault at a rate about four times that of graduate students. But over half of the responses included in Tulane's study were graduate or professional students. And since we know that undergrads are much more likely to be victims of sexual violence, if we were to analyze the results of Tulane's survey for undergraduates only, we would expect that the numbers would be even higher. That's a really good point. Okay, so now we know what kinds of questions to ask and what limitations to keep in mind when looking at this data. But what exactly does the Tulane survey data say? Okay, let's take a look. Because the bulk of national data focuses on college women's experiences, we're mostly going to look at those numbers too. But I do really want to stress that we know that at Tulane and nationally, college students of all genders are victims of sexual violence. When they presented this data, Tulane administrators cited this number, that 4% of all Tulane students experience rape. And remember, that's in one 12 month period for male and female undergraduate and graduate students combined. But let's also take a look at these two numbers, which are the percentage of female students experiencing rape and the percentage of female students experiencing attempted rape in a 12-month period. We're going to add these two percentages together, which gives us 11.6% of female students at Tulane experiencing rape or attempted rape in one year. That seems like a lot. How does that compare to the national data? Most people have heard of the 1 in 5 number, that 1 in 5 college women will experience rape or attempted rape during her four years in college. This number comes from the 2000 National Institute of Justice report on the sexual victimization of college women. This study also also gave us yearly victimization rates, which showed that, on average, 4.9% of American college women will experience rape or attempted rape in any given year. So our 11.6 number is over twice that. Yes, and actually the way that the national study found that 1 in 5 number is by taking the yearly rape and multiplying it by 4 to reflect the 4 years of college. Okay, so let's try that with Tulane's numbers. 11.6% is about 1 in 10 women, times 4 years of college is about 4 in 10. Wow, so if the national number is 1 in 5, that makes Tulane's rate almost twice as high. This is Tulane's first version of a climate survey, so we can't assume that these numbers are 100% accurate in every sense. But preliminary data is still super important and highly suggestive of what kind of situation we could be looking at in terms of sexual violence here. In this case, it seems like all of the issues we've discussed so far would indicate that the only differences we can expect to see for the next round of results is for numbers to be even higher, right? Yes, 
So at the very least, these numbers may give us a good idea of the lower estimate of sexual assault rates at Tulane. I was really proud that Tulane administrators released this preliminary data, but I think it's the responsibility of all members of the Tulane community to have a good understanding of what these numbers really mean. This problem is by no means exclusive to Tulane. We know that sexual violence is happening everywhere. I love my university and I'm proud of the steps it is taking to end this very real problem of sexual violence on campus. But unless we know what we're really up against, we'll never be able to put a stop to sexual assault and gender-based violence once and for all. As other schools start to conduct and share their climate surveys, we hope that these conversations can spread.